Hi, so we're here today in Westminster as part of the Travel for Action Day. I'm really excited to be here. Um, lots of people have turned up. We've had MPs turning up, agents, operators, and, and it really feels really bizarre. I mean, I've personally spoken to a lot of individuals over the course of 12 months. I've just realised it's the first time I've seen them in person. A really great feeling. Um, I know the events are happening in Edinburgh and Belfast. Um, and also we've got a virtual event in Wales, so fantastic that the whole industry has come together. Um, and we're seeing crew here, we're seeing pilots, we're seeing tour operators inbound, um, business travel, leisure members, phenomenally united in a time of real crisis. Um, one thing we really want to get out of today is to make sure that across all our media channels, every opportunity is to get out, get the message across that the travel industry really does need financial support, tailored financial support. We need MPs to rise above the parapets. We need them to come and speak to us. And we need everyone to be lobbying their MPs to get the message across there. And above all, we absolutely need a safe return of international travel, uh, international travel um, in a safe, risk mitigated way. Yeah, it's been a really tough uh, sort of 15 months. I think, um, like every other travel agent out there at the moment, we've been running on probably 5 to 10% revenues with probably 30 to 40% cost still injected into the business with not being able to furlough all the staff because, you know, we've been administrating and refunding money, which has been tough. So, yeah, I think we're, you know, we're, 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 th we're, we're coming through it, but it's been a very tough 15 months, yeah. Just transparency and, um, and, and look, talk to us. You know, we, we seem to be non-communicative with the government they don't want to seem to want to talk to us all we want is just some real news and some and some facts really on, on what on what the proposals are either stick to the traffic light system that was signed off and proposed and we supported uh, with that in terms of running it uh, looking at the metrics looking at the infection rates and all the metrics you gave us or if you're not going to do that and you want to take it down a different path in terms of not being transparent then please offer the sector some support because obviously the sector des desperately needs it uh, yeah, quite frankly, it's been catastrophic. We had a very successful company up until the point of the pandemic. Um, and since then, we've lost nearly half of our workforce through redundancy. Uh, we've retained all of our clients. We've actually even won new clients, but with nobody traveling, we've absolutely got no money coming in whatsoever. Our business is down about 92% um, since the start of this. Um, and we've just been hemorrhaging money month after month because we've still had to pe have people in work to facilitate questions from our clients um, and so we've had to pay those people and we haven't been able to put everybody on furlough and make use of, of that support, the only support that we've, we've had from the government. So uh, I was invited to Port Cullis House uh, into our local MP Daniel Trudinsky's office and uh, he was able to uh, spend some time it's our second meeting, so it's a follow-up from a Zoom that we've already had. Um, and he, I was able to give him a bit of a greater understanding about exactly what we do need, and that without it, um, you know, come September, actually I'm not sure quite how, how do we pay our staff salaries when, if, if there is no earnings until that date. So um, we've got um, steps that we're following up. He's going to help me with um, ARG grant because mine was refused again today. So he's going to help me follow that up. He is uh, writing to Rishi and we um, are due to uh, book in uh, for a Zoom in a couple of weeks. I feel that to start with he was just paying me lip service but then when I mentioned the fact that we were trying to generate loads of media coverage and that ITV had called me yesterday, he was infinitely more interested. The industry needs targeted support, like the hospi hospitality industry had. Uh, we need targeted support, and I say to the government, stop changing the goalposts and stick to the rules yourselves. Uh, based on 2019 projections, year on year, I've lost approximately £1.4 million in turnover. Um, countless opportunities for new business, um, as well as uh, business relationships through failed suppliers, as an example. Uh, I think they should truly take a moment to actually understand the travel industry. The travel industry is not just about people going on holiday. There is an entire eco-structure that supports travel. There is travel businesses, there is travel agents, there are travel consortiums. People travel for business, people travel for pleasure, people travel to see their families. 
This is not purely about people going on holiday. This is about travel businesses, the people that support the travel industry. Subsequently, we need support from our UK government to help us support our businesses and fundamentally to help us survive. Oh, it's, it's been severely affected by the pandemic as every travel business has. I think as a ski company, we were one of the first to be hit because it hit in March 2020. So we were literally one of the first tour operators or the first sectors of the, of the industry to be, to be affected by it. And you can remember it so clearly, you know, it's country after country, hour by hour, things were changing. So it was very much at that point, you know, what are we doing? We need to get people home. We need to, we need to refund people. We need to sort of act fast. And I think we, you know, we had people in the office till midnight, just trying to get people home, work with the agents and everything else. And then gradually as it's gone on, obviously none of us have had any seasons so far. We didn't get a summer last year. We didn't have Lapland. We haven't had another ski season. So we literally haven't been able to send anybody anywhere. And, and over the last 16 months it's just been quite relentless really as, as a company you know we're we've been one of the good guys we've refunded we've transferred we've given people the options to move seasons and things but it is all about us just supporting everybody you know customers and agents to really do the right thing between us but yeah it's been a really difficult sort of few months gosh my message to the government I think to be fair we just need them to listen we need them to understand us they need to give us respect um, we need support. We need financial sector support specifically for us. You know, we're, none of us have earned any money since March 2020 or very, very little. Uh, if they don't give us that support, we're just going to continue to be on our knees. But we also need them to understand us. I think we've gone through enough and a long enough time now with them not really getting what we do, not realising we can't close our doors as such because we still need to administer and look after all of our customers. They just need to really listen to us. It's been a nightmare since last March and I think we all worked so hard last year thinking we would rebook so many clients for this year and now we're faced with again uncertainty from the government with no clear message which leaves us again with more amendments, more uncertain customers and a lack of confidence again from our customers. You know we were the first industry to, industry to suffer and actually we're the, going to be the last industry to get out of this. So my message to the government is in order to save hundreds of thousands of jobs, the industry is on its knees, it is collapsing. And action is now needed to restart this industry and we've got to start it very quick and we've got to have sector specific support to see us through this. So I would look for an extension in the furlough scheme. I would look for a tailor-made support in terms of grants you know, as I just said earlier there, we've got 19 shops that are still closed. We've got a furlough scheme that's coming to an end in September. What do we do then if we've got nowhere to sell and we've got 50 staff all sitting there twiddling their thumbs because there's just nothing to sell? So they've got to get, they've got to get the industry open. The rest of Europe has managed it. Why can't the UK and our government manage it? It's as simple as that. We have to get things moving. Well, it's absolutely devastated. 18 months of misery, toil, lies, changes. It's been a nightmare for me, my team, their families, my family, our customers. It's an absolute nightmare and a, and a continuing nightmare. This is about real people, real lives. It's talking about safe travel, save lives, save jobs, get a grip. Sure, I mean, it's desecrated the industry and the business itself. We need the UK and the US industry and borders open again just to get things moving along. And we're here to really ask the UK government to support our industry and to reopen safely overseas and international travel. We're ready, we've done a lot of work, you know, for our customers to feel safe on board of our airplanes. And, uh, you know, we can't wait for international, international travel to resume. So we had our first cancellation due to COVID back in February 2020 and since then it's just been a non-stop um, roller coaster of amendments, cancellations, rebookings and people asking us when travel is going to start again and without a crystal ball we just can't answer those questions. We've lost money ourselves uh, refunding customers where airlines and hotels haven't paid out. We have our staff on furlough with the furlough scheme ending that's been a worry so lots of sleepless nights 
really busy and just trying to keep the business afloat really. I'd really urge the government to take the time to understand how the industry works, just what a significant impact the pandemic has had on the streams of income into such a diverse range of businesses across the country and to understand that if we lose that, just what an impact it will have on our economy. So the day here is winding up. It's been a great event for both business and leisure travel. Uh, great event down here in London and also across the regional events that are taking place and also the virtual activity, including the Twitter storm that happened at two o'clock today. We've seen great engagement with MPs, lots of them coming out to meet with us and talk with us and also lots of coverage from the press. A um, huge thank you to Finn who support us with our PR for supporting and arranging a lot of those interviews. Uh, final thank yous go to the members that have come down here to support this event and support the industry and, and actually everybody across the industry that has come down to be part of this and supported the regional events and the virtual events. It really is making a difference. Um, and it's been amazing to see members in real life. It really does remind you that this is a people industry and uh, can't wait to get out and about a little bit more and start holding more events. So um, that's it for today. It's been a great event and uh, let's hope that it has added some value and done what we want it to do. Save our businesses! Save our businesses! Save our jobs! Save our jobs!